context here is that Lee enjoys a reputation in the modern day as someone who counseled acceptance and submission and resignation to the situation. And, and that has always struck me as, as uh, it's, a, it's a sort of theory that doesn't add up in the sense that we know Lee was the most prestigious man in the South. We are told that he counseled submission, but we know in the end that the South didn't simply submit to the political will of the North, that Southerners, ex-Confederates, began very quickly to contest uh, the Northern uh, understanding of the meaning of the war and of the peace and, and Northern plans for reconstruction, to contest them through political means and through extra-legal means uh, and, and violent means. And what I found is that um, in the eyes of Confederates, Lee was not a symbol of submission. He was a symbol of a kind of unbowed uh, pride and a kind of measured defiance. So Grant leaves us a very long memoir in which he tells us what he was thinking at the moment of the surrender. Lee never leaves such a memoir. Lee will live for only five years after the surrender. But we do have these sources. We have Lee's exchange of letters with Grant in which again and again he uses this word sort of restoration to conjure his notion of a just peace. We have Lee's farewell address. We know he requested of Grant that each Confederate uh, soldier be given a printed parole pass as a kind of form of immunity from reprisal. We have Lee's interview about which I'll, I'll, uh, to which I'll turn in just a moment. We have Lee's testimony before uh, a congressional committee looking into conditions in the South in February of 1866. We have Lee, letters Lee wrote in the post-war period. And if we put these things together, they paint a picture of Lee as a man who, yes, technically observed the terms of his parole, absolutely, but who in subtle ways was pointing the way towards the restoration of the South's political power within the Union, which is what he wanted, the restoration of the South's political power within the Union. And he, this is the note he strikes in this interview with a New York reporter just a few weeks after the surrender. In Lee's mind, he, in a sense, has drawn a line at the sand at Appomattox. Confederates will concede defeat, but the North should ask nothing more of them. And he issues a kind of warning. He says, if there are uh, radical measures, if there are punitive measures, then we'll renew the fight. 